Hello, this is a short podcast on how to do something called BIC modeling that stands for Bayesian Information Criteria. And we use BIC modeling to understand causal loops. We use BIC modeling to compare uh, two or more different models. These slides, by the way, are courtesy of Dr. Gary Churchill and Sue McClatchy at the Jackson Lab in Bar Harbor, Maine. Okay, so what we're doing here, we have an observation that says people who eat oatmeal have a lower cholesterol. So our hypothesis is that there is a causal relationship between people who eat oatmeal and people who have a low cholesterol. And that's a fairly reasonable hypothesis. Oatmeal is good for you. If you eat oatmeal, you are healthier. And as a result, your cholesterol goes down. But it's also the possibility that people who have low cholesterol are uh, inclined to be oatmeal eaters. That's a little far-fetched, but we can make that that hypothesis that if you have low cholesterol, uh, your body craves oatmeal for some reason. Um, or it might be the case that people with a certain lifestyle, people who are, are eat healthy, people who uh, are outdoors people, uh, people who are athletes, uh, tend to eat oatmeal and they also tend to eat, they tend to have low cholesterol. So the oatmeal eating has nothing to do with cholesterol, it's actually a factor of the, the lifestyle. And the lifestyle also influences whether or not they'd eat oatmeal, okay? So what we have right now are three different models. We said we have model one that says oatmeal eaters have low cholesterol. We have model two that says cholesterol, low cholesterol people eat oatmeal. And we have a third model that says lifestyle influences whether or not you eat oatmeal and influences your cholesterol level. So what we can do is we can do some controlled experiment. We can control for lifestyle. And with the Jackson Lab, what they do is they, they breed mice. So they can make sure every mouse in the study has exactly the same lifestyle. They all live in the same cage. They get fed the same way. Uh, the lights are on the same amount of time. They have the same exercise wheel, all of that stuff. So I can control for lifestyle and see whether or not that has an effect on, on oatmeal. Okay, uh, we can also do some randomized experiments. We can say half of the, the, the people in the study or the mouse in the study will uh, be fed oatmeal, the other half will not. We can control for lifestyle. So there's all kinds of, of experiments and combinations of these three things, lifestyle, oatmeal, and cholesterol, that we can uh, do in, a, in, a, in an experiment to try to figure out is there something that will uh, help improve cholesterol. Um, let me change screens here. I'm going to go to the, actually, I'll stay here. Um, so this is, it's a little hard to see here. So this is a Mathematica version of what I just said. I'll read it to you because it's hard to read. The first model says that oatmeal eaters have low cholesterol. Okay. The second model says people with a specific lifestyle have a low cholesterol level. The third model there says people with a certain lifestyle tend to eat oatmeal. The fourth model there says people with a particular lifestyle tend to eat oatmeal, and because they eat oatmeal, they have low cholesterol. Uh, the fifth model there says people with low cholesterol tend to be oatmeal eaters. And the sixth model there says people who have low cholesterol tend to have a certain lifestyle. So I have six different models here. And actually, there's a seventh one here. Here's the causal, the, the, the more complicated loop that says people who have certain lifestyle uh, tend to eat oatmeal, and people with a certain lifestyle tend to have low cholesterol, and that oatmeal has some influence over cholesterol eaters. Okay, I'm not going to go into all of the slides. These are the ones for computational biology, where in this case, I have three factors. Um, I have something called a uh, a QTL, I have something called a transcript, and I have something called a phenotype. So these are called triplets. And what I want to see there is which one of these three things is causing the other to change or uh, have some, uh, some significant uh, value change. Okay. Uh, this is what a, what a BIC model looks like. So what we're saying, this is done in R, so I'm using the, the command BIC in R, and I'll show you that in a minute. And these are the big scores are done on aggression. So what we're saying here is T is a factor of Q. And you can see that there, T, look at which way the arrow is going. T is a function of, or T is the dependent variable, and Q is the independent variable. So T is a function of Q, and P is a function of, uh, um, 
P is a function of Q as well. Notice that I have two models. Uh, I have one model here, and I have two sets of mathematics for it. Okay? We talked about how to do a linear model fit in R. You use the LM command. Okay? I won't go into the underlying mathematics or statistics of that, but fundamentally what you need to understand is BIC is used to compare uh, two or more models, and a smaller BIC score is better. So if I look at two models and the difference between the BIC scores for the two models is less than five, that's not very significant. I can't say that those two models are significantly different. Okay? If the difference between two BIC models is between 5 and 10, I can say, ah, eh, there might be a difference between these two models. And the third one, if there's more than uh, a difference of 10 between two BIC models, then there's strong support that these things are different. Okay? In the lab, you're going to be looking at um, uh, five or six different uh, options for the air quality lab. The first one says the temperature has some influence on the production of ozone in the atmosphere. The next one says solar radiation has an effect on the amount of ozone in the atmosphere. The next one says the amount of ozone in the atmosphere has an effect on how much solar radiation. Then you're going to say solar radiation has an effect on temperature, and because of that, temperature now has an effect on ozone. You're going to say ozone has an effect on temperature. And lastly, you're going to say that solar radiation influences temperature, solar radiation influences ozone, and temperature also influences um, ozone. So that's the model you'll be looking at uh, for the air quality study. How do we do that in R? Um, I went here, whoops, let me get out of that window. I loaded the grades database uh, from the, the video conference. I attached the grades and I've shown you what the names are here. So I'm going to try to do a study between these three factors, college GPA, high school GPA, and SAT scores. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make my primary uh, variable my college GPA, and I'm just going to say, I'm going to relate that to itself, so I'm going to say tilde 1, and I'm going to get a big score. That's 234.25. So what I'm saying is that college GPA isn't influenced by anything, okay? College GPA just is, okay? It's not inf affected by the high school uh, GPA. It's not affected by the uh, SAT. College GPA just is whatever it is, okay? So now what I want to do, and notice that I'm doing a linear model every time, I want to say college GPA, is that affected by the high school GPA? Okay, so I'm going to run a big score on that. Okay. And what I get is 200, 203. That's a significantly lower number than 234. And the difference between 234 and 203 is much greater than 10. It's actually 31. So that says that there is a significant relationship here between uh, high school GPA and college GPA. And that's probably pretty intuitive to you. Okay, so let's go do another one. Let's say, uh, what's the impact of GPA, college GPA, as, as a function of an SAT score? And I get 206. Now, that's not as strong as a model as the high school GPA, but it's still much greater than, um, or much less than 234, which is what we got from college GPA, uh, all by itself. Notice, however, though, if I, call, if I compare college GPA and high school GPA and college GPA and SAT, what I can say there, because there's not a very big difference here, there's only a difference of three here, I can say there's very little difference between uh, the influence of the high school GPA and the influence of the, of the high school SAT score on, um, on, the, on the college GPA. I can also combine them. I can say, okay, what's the influence of both the college GPA based on the high school GPA and the big score of the college GPA? I better spell that right. And the, SA, the SAT score here. 
Oops, I missed the parentheses. Oh, bad type here. And I'm actually doing this wrong here. And let me try it again. Tilda high school dot GPA plus SAT. Get all my factors in there. Okay. Oh, that's significantly lower. That's 192. So what that's suggesting to me is that um, if I combined what I know, if I take the high school GPA and the SAT scores and look at them together, that both of them have some a better predictor over a college GPA score, uh, college GPA. So this is BIC modeling, and we're going to ask you to do that for the air quality model. Again, if we go back to uh, the Mathematica screen, so in here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six models in the air quality uh, case study, and we're going to ask you to run BIC scoring on all six of these and then to be able to say which one of those, compare those six models and say which one of those six models do you think is the, is the best model. Okay, I hope this helps, and if you have any questions, we'll see you in the tutorials. Thanks very much.